Please rise. Good evening, and thank you all for being with us this evening as we begin our holy season of Lent. I just want to let you know that when it comes time for the imposition of ashes, you can come forward to have ashes on your forehead. There's also small baskets on the end of each um, altar rail that have small containers of ashes if you'd rather bring ashes back to your pew and impose them on yourself. You're welcome to do that. Generally, you're welcome to do whatever... You need to do to feel comfortable here as you um, encounter the sacred and the holy in this community. We're glad you're here and you're always welcome here. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness 
may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been, has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among, pe among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. We'll read responsively by half verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin. He, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. 
We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen and not by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not stir up, store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The church pension group puts out a calendar with cartoons for each month. I guess they're hoping we'll laugh our way into retirement. So March, uh, there's, a, there's a priest in her vestments and um, she's in front of the camera and she's got the like stained glass window backdrop behind her, right? But you can see that outside of the frame, she's still got her pajama pants and slippers on. <laughs> and she's got the coffee and the newspaper, you know, just right there, the pets are there, you know. And from the kitchen, one of her family members says something like, who's gonna tell her that we can go back to in-person worship now? <laughs> and the other one says, not me, I think she likes it this way. I know it seems a little odd to tell a joke at the beginning of the most penitential season of the year, but. You know, I think whoever picked the readings for Ash Wednesdays definitely had a sense of humor, you know? I mean, all of these readings of scripture seem to talk to a, the importance of uh, what happens inside, you know, to, our, to the work of our heart, to what is between us and God alone, and what doesn't matter what other people see. It's not, you're not doing it for show. All of these readings on the one day of the year, the only day of the year, well, you will leave church with a visible mark that you have been here, right? I mean, other days you might have a hymn stuck in your mind or, a, you know, insights from the wonderful sermon you've just heard, but nobody's going to know that. But today, after this worship, anybody who sees you will know that you've been to church. And frankly, I think that cartoon also is um, very pertinent to Lent. Because, you know, in the last couple of years, we've um, become accustomed, I think, to, I don't know, maybe putting on a show is too strong of a way of putting it, but, you know, your life is lived inside a little frame, right? I mean, when you're on Zoom, you only have to look good from the waist up. And, and even, you don't have to look even good from the waist up if you just want to turn your camera off, you know? But Lent is here to remind us that God sees what's going on outside the frame, right? And God sees what's going on inside our hearts as well. And I know there's a way in which that sometimes is a little bit scary because I'm not sure I want God to know everything that's going on. I'm not sure I want God to see and understand all of it. But there's also a great gift in that because it's the gift of God's presence in our lives and every part of who we are and how we live. Human beings are really alone among God's created creatures in our um, ability to make our lives kind of miserable. And there are many, many ways we do that. But Lent is this particular set of practices that, that only human beings do, you know? I mean, animals don't fast. I mean, I'm not sure they eat three meals a day like we do, but they don't give up chocolate, you know? And plants don't do penance, right? 
There are little flies flying around thinking, oh, I'm a horrible sinner. What can I do to make this right? It's, it's a strictly human being thing. And I think many people from the outside would look at us and think, what is wrong with these people? Why would they do all these things that make their lives more difficult? Why would they you know, you know, focus on how horrible things are or how horrible they are? But the truth is, we make our lives more difficult, perhaps, in this season because we want to do better. As human beings, we also are distinct from all of the created life, I think, in our desire to live in right relationship with God, in our awareness of our own mortality and of our limitations and our desire to, to live into the fullness of what God is calling us to, despite those limitations, to, to live in to all that we can be and to make ourselves and our world a better place. People see us fasting or penitent or whatever, but they don't necessarily see, as Paul says, the joy that's in our heart. They don't know how we long to live in love and light with God. The truth is, Lent is meant to prepare us for Easter. I know I'm jumping the gun here, but that's actually where we're going, right? At the end of Lent, we celebrate the, the reconciliation, the renewal, the rebirth that we are allowed in our life in Christ. And the truth of the matter is, we are not living into the fullness of who God wants us to be. Certainly not as a human species, and for most of us, not as individual human beings either. And it's also true that we don't have a lot of time, not in this mortal life anyway, to get things right. But the conclusion of those truths is not that we need to spend as much as time as we can wallowing in our own misery and feeling how horrible we are about every horrible thing. The conclusion is that it's time for us to put on our work pants, right? And get to work. Take off your pajama pants and get dressed for the day. Well, okay, you can still wear your pajama pants if you're worshiping on Zoom. Frankly, if you go to St. Stephen's, you could probably wear your pajama pants to church, but the point is that the season of Lent invites us to get to work, right? To work on our hearts, to work on our souls, to work on our relationship with God, our relationship with other people, to work on whatever we need to do to restore our souls in this spring cleaning before we celebrate renewal and rebirth and reconciliation in a couple, in a, well, 40 days. <laughs> It doesn't matter what people see on your forehead or don't see. It doesn't matter what they think is going on in your spiritual life and they don't have really have any idea because God knows and you know, right? You know who you are and who you're called to be in, in the grace and love of God. And God sees outside the frame. God sees inside our hearts. God sees all that we are, and God loves us and wants us to live into what it means to be beloved children of God. So the question of Lent, the question for these 40 days, is what do you have to do to make your life in God real? Please stand as you're able. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. And it was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution 
set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Into dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
Please join me in the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be always with you. Let's greet one another with a sign of peace. Let us rend our hearts and not our garments and continue to live in generosity and gratitude with God.
I want to remind you that this is God's table and God makes a place for all people. So wherever you are on your journey, all are welcome here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. That fervent in prayers and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen Gifts of God for the people of God.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the war of peace and grant us strength and courage to model on the serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.